to this month's episode of The Value Proposition, brought to you by the Fitness Business Podcast. Now over to your host, Sarah Pellegrino. Today, we'll be speaking with the Digital Revenue Systems team to hear how they are revolutionizing digital signage in the fitness industry. Welcome to the Value Proposition by the Fitness Business Podcast. I'm your host, Sarah Pellegrino. The Value Proposition was created specifically for industry suppliers to showcase the value that they bring to health club owners and operators beyond their product or service. Joining us today, we have Taylor Watkins, founder and CEO of Digital Revenue Systems, Matt Genus, co-founder and CEO for Fit Factory Health Clubs in Massachusetts and Texas, Mark Daniel, VP of Global Partner Development Reflex Systems. Taylor is going to start us off today with our three real minutes or three RM as we like to say here to give us some background on how digital revenue systems came to be. Taylor, what is digital revenue systems and how did this idea come about? So digital revenue systems, we technically started last year, January of 2020. We decided to take a sabbatical after around March time. Now we're back helping clubs out. I started a top 100 club. It's a large facility where um, we had a a robust digital signage department. I was started a membership. It became another revenue source for me selling ads on that digital signage system. In 2018, I took the advertising signage over and converted it to a very large revenue stream for the club. And during that whole time, I always asked, well, why don't other clubs do this? So that's where DRS started. That's where we also partnered with Reflect. And now we're uh, rocking and rolling with bringing in uh, new clubs and then also partnering with other businesses. I love that. Taylor, when we say digital signage in a health club, what exactly do we mean? What screens are we talking about in a facility? So digital signage can mean a lot of different things. Um, We can take over your displays that are in your cardio area, the screens that are in your weight room. We can even help procure new screens, whether you want to do a digital wall, a jumbotron, a projector, anything like that. It really depends on what your target is and what your goals are with your digital signage. Very, very cool. Thank you. Now, is digital revenue systems exclusive to the fitness industry? As of right now, yes, because that's our niche. We love yeah. the fitness industry. We've been a part of it. I've been in the fitness industry since college. And, you know, if there is an opportunity to go into another industry at some point, you know, that's something we'll look at and strategically think about. But as of right now, We're definitely just in the fitness industry. Awesome. 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 All right. So when we talk about marketing and advertising to health club consumers, why are they such a good target for digital advertising? Well, the the awesome thing about health club consumers is one, when they go to a club, it's first dwell time. They're there for a while. You know, you have a captive audience for an hour, hour and a half, sometimes even two hours, uh, depends you know, if you have childcare or not, and you want to, you know, put your little one in for two hours in childcare. The other nice thing is the demographics. You have a a group of people that one have disposable income, have usually a higher education level, and also it doesn't matter if you're, you know, in an affluent area or not affluent area. You're going to have businesses that want to target those consumers specifically. And we can get those businesses directly to the consumer by being in fitness clubs. A great, great point. Absolutely. Awesome, Taylor. Well, thank you so much for walking us through the 3RM. Now, you and I have talked extensively about this, right? But anytime we tackle the topic of marketing and advertising in the fitness industry, we have to discuss whether or not a health club owner or operator has a marketing team right? Or if they're tackling it themselves. So how can digital revenue systems help an owner or operator who does not have a marketing team? Well, again, that's a really good question. And I think, you know, the past 18 months to two years have really kind of changed the landscape of that. 
you know, when we come in, we build a private, customizable digital signage network for the facility. It's theirs. But the first thing that they need to do is actually use that to their advantage for their members. They need to communicate to their members. They need to get their information out there, whether it's promotions, events, reminders, signups for classes, buying a smoothie, whatever it is. You need to communicate to your members. The other thing is when we come in, you know, we offer different type of in-club marketing packages. And this actually came up in, in a few meetings I had with our Rex roundtables and then also talking with a lot of clubs in URSA is that they don't have the time nor the energy to put toward in-club advertising or in-club communications to their members. They're, you know, they're worried about emails, social media, things like that. What we offer is different in-club marketing packages ranging from, you know, a little bit of graphic help to full service club help where we can, you know, do your in-club ads, promotions, events, QR codes, landing pages, text numbers, or even if you want to have supplemental flyers and brochures, we can create and print those for you. Awesome. Now, Taylor, in the past year, I know you partner with Rex Roundtables. They're a beloved partner of the podcast and um, previous guest on the Value Prop. So have, you know, in your conversations with those owners, what have you seen over the past year, right? Have you seen more health clubs with marketing teams or are you seeing them trying to really run a lean team and maybe marketing is the first thing to go? What are you seeing out there? So I think this is a little twofold. One, if you look back 20 years ago, clubs really didn't have a marketing team. It was your salesperson being your sales and marketing person. You didn't have to worry about websites, social media, really emails that much. You were looking at direct mail pieces, billboards. Now with social media coming into play and also worry about pay-per-click, SEO, things like that, your marketing team started to grow and you had your director of marketing or your marketing person, then you might have hired a social media person because websites became easier to build and all you had a, a website developer or somebody that worked on your blog and things like that. Now that clubs are starting to run mean and lean again, a lot of this can be outsourced. It's very inexpensive to outsource, become more effective, and it allows your marketing team to do better things to benefit the club, whether it's freeing up time, really connecting with the members, or really focusing on getting those outside prospects in and becoming new members. And we're one of the groups now that can help with that outsource of in-club content. We'll take that worry off the table for you. That's awesome. That's really fantastic to hear. Now, how do you help an owner find businesses in their community that want to advertise within the club? First off, that really depends on the club. Do they want to have the outside advertiser in at all? In some cases, we have found no, um, but some cases like Fit Factory, yeah, they want to have those advertisers come in. What we do is learn more about the community. Fitness people are fitness people. It doesn't matter if you're you know, in a fluent area, not so fluent area, if you're in urban, rural, whatever, fitness people are fitness people. And they come to the club, they love being at the club, they do things, and they're usually active within their community and they have disposable income. So it's a great win for any of the local businesses to really get into these clubs. And now I brought up a point a little while ago with someone that, you know, it's not all of us trying to get, let's say, high-end apparel company coming in. It's getting Kim's Boutique that sells the high-end fitness apparel that's three doors down to advertise into the facility that's now benefiting the community. So, you know, we do a deep dive in the demographics, do a deep dive into the local businesses and area and really try to focus on where are our members or the members of the club, where are they being consumers? I love that. Supporting local who's right next to you. That's a really amazing feature that you're providing. So thank you so much for that, Taylor. Now we have spoken a lot about how successful it can be when clubs market their own profit centers. So for example, juice bars, personal training, to name a few when they market those on their own digital signs within the club. So tell us more about this strategy of increasing non-dues revenue. 
Well, I mean, other than just the profit centers, I think you need a full buy-in from your employees as well. So you need to increase the marketing of, of your employees. So like, because they're your first line of influencers. For example, at Fit Factory, they did a thing where they were focusing on their trainers for a month. This is why this trainer is great. You should do the workout with them. Why don't you try this workout? After that, we want to start looking into acknowledgements of your members. You know, we're all vain in some sense. And to see yourself on a TV or have somebody congratulate you for doing your first 5K or something like that, it's great. And then we want to look at also the increase of the profit centers by reminding the people, hey, we have this product. For example, with Fit Factory, one of their pushes right now are the cooler drinks. So we put cooler drinks out there. Hey, don't forget to get your cooler drink when you're done. Um, this could be anything from smoothies. It could be your personal training packages or something that people just don't realize that are out there anymore because one, they get inundated with emails. They're not going to pick up the flyers. They will come to you and say, well, I don't remember you saying this or getting this or whatever. So having that digital signage and that constant contact right in front of them while they're at your club, it's just a great way to reiterate everything in those profit centers. Absolutely. Remind them on the way out. <laughs> yeah, actually, I had a great point. Somebody yesterday I was talking to said, if you could use the digital signage just to increase the revenue of the member per day, it's a big win. So if you're current member that comes in, if you can increase that member to spend two extra dollars per day, five extra dollars, 10 extra dollars, that's huge in the long run. I love the conversation around non-dues revenue because it is so important. I think club owners get in that rut where, oh, we need more members, we need more members. Hold on a second, you have a really great amount of members, why don't you just try to make a little more money from each of those members? So it's a great conversation. I love that we're advertising non-dues revenue in the club with digital revenue systems. So Taylor, talk us through what percentage, if you know we're talking a TV screen in a health club, what percentage of ads should be external businesses versus should be clubs upselling their members on ancillary revenue? Is there a sweet spot there? What do you recommend? Well, again, this is based on the club. First off, we highly recommend more than one display. In the Fit Factory locations right now, we're doing eight displays in the majority of the locations. Um, we want them to be in key areas where we're getting the most eyeballs. And the other thing we want to look at is what's their goal? What's the goal of the club first? And we really focus on member experience first. That's what we want. As far as the split between percentages of ads versus in-club ads, again, that depends on the club. We don't like to go up no more than 40% of like an hour rotation. So, you know, we're looking at possibly 24 minutes, 26 minutes of advertising. So that's three ads per hour per advertiser. But that's still, that's on the high end. And is that the 40%, is that external businesses? That's external business, yeah. Okay. So, but no matter what, we don't like to come in and just blast advertising right away from external ads. You know, it's a trickling effect that we want to bring in so that the members get used to it. It's passive. It's unobtrusive. We don't have sound or anything like that. We don't recommend sound. Most people have their Bluetooth in anyway, but you want something that's going to catch their eye. And if I'm an advertiser, if I can get my ad seen, you know, somebody's there an hour and a half to two hours, one ad could be seen anywhere from nine to, you know, 12 times. Great point. Great point. Thank you so much. Now, Taylor, is there a thorough demographic analysis completed of each membership base? And how do you determine what time certain ads run over others? How do you work through that? So we can get granular with the ads because of our partnership with Reflect. But as far as a full demographic analysis, that really depends on the club. We have partnered with an external marketing data company that's on my round table. They are amazing at what they do. They are pure, just awesome data crunchers. But we will provide that for any of the clubs that we partner with. We, we think it's a valuable resource and something that every club should know anyway. Very, very cool. 
And then when you're talking about, you know, when the ads run, what time of day, things like that, is that something that that marketing firm is helping you with? Uh, no, that's something we work together with the the clubs that we're in. We look at their daily check-ins. We start looking at their demographic, you know, when do their seniors come in, uh, working professionals, who's coming to their classes. Is it the uh, moms dropping off uh, their kids to daycare coming in? You know, so we really do our best to learn as much about the clubs as possible to better suit the needs of them, but also the suits the needs of the businesses that are advertising within the clubs. Absolutely. I love how customized this solution is, right? Every answer mm-hmm. depends on the club. Everybody's different. And that really oh, yeah. is how the industry yeah. works, right? That's great. Very, very cool. Well, last but not least, what are some statistics around digital signage and why it is so successful? Well, actually, digital signage, and Mark can definitely talk more to this as well. Digital signage has seen to boost customer satisfaction by 46%. 47.7% of digital signage increased the effectiveness of brand awareness. Digital signage can bump the average purchase amount by 29.5%. You can increase your customer retention by 30%. And if you really think about it and you, you start to open your eyes of what's around you when you're out and about, there's a lot of digital signage everywhere. 60% of Americans have paid for a product because digital signage caught their eye. Okay. So, I mean, think of Times Square, you know, think of the billboards that are out and about, you know, now you have a captive audience when you're within a club. Absolutely. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Taylor. All right, Matt, we are coming your way. You and I go way back to my software days, so it's so fun to work with you again. I'm thrilled to have you on the value proposition. I would love for you to start us off with just giving our listeners a little background into Fit Factory Health Clubs. When you know we're listening to Taylor, it says depends on the club, depends on the club. So when we are talking about Fit Factory and your examples, I just want our listeners to have a benchmark and just to understand where you all are as business. So give us a few little nuggets here. How many locations, average members per location, and some things you offer. Sure, absolutely. Can I, can I tell the story how you truly won my heart though? Truly? Yes. yes. So, <laughs> Please do. Not, not, just, do. not just your magnetic personality, of course. So Sarah, Sarah was in town in her old software days, being an account rep, visiting clients. And so she was in the area. We had taken the corporate team out for a corporate outing. We were celebrating something, I forget. And we were at one of these fancy restaurants in the seaport by the water. And the first hour and a half, we were savages of ordering king crab legs and oysters and all the expensive seafood we could find. And an hour and a half in, uh, the waitress walked up and said, just so you know, up until this point, this is all paid for. And I think I actually had like a crab leg in my mouth when I looked at her and I didn't know what was going on. And Sarah was sitting three seats behind us and didn't say anything. And she, she, took, she took care of the, uh, the chunk of the bill up front. So thank you. I knew I was in love from that point on. You're so, <laughs> so welcome. That was my legal seafood and it was my favorite, favorite restaurant in Boston. I celebrated my 21st birthday there. So anytime I went yeah. back to Boston, I was like, let me just go grab lunch by the water. <laughs> it was incredible. It was incredible. Uh, so yeah. nice. Good so answer you. your question. So Fit Factory, we currently have seven locations, five in Massachusetts, two in Texas. Um, Our newest was Berlin, Massachusetts, opened in October of 2020. Uh, Average club membership right now ranges around 4,000. We were about 6,000 pre-COVID and obviously working to get back there. Uh, I would consider the the model uh, very in line with an HPLP 2.0, high volume, low price point 2.0. So we have traditional big box gyms or clubs, with sort of boutique experiences in them, everything from you know, mind body studios in indoor rowing studios to you know tanning, kids care, et cetera. Perfect. Thank you so much for the overview. And Taylor, you brought this up and I want to ask Matt too, what was your goal when partnering with digital revenue systems? What made you call them? Uh, it's part of it's in their name, revenue. Uh, so that's <laughs> like part that. of it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, we, we had actually, you know, we have already saw the advertising, in-club advertising of local businesses, not so much the profit centers uh, predominantly, of just another revenue source for us to bring in. Uh, even pre-COVID, obviously more important now that we're post-COVID. And we had sort of done it, but we didn't 
we haven't done it well on all accounts and understood how much work it was going to take and to really to really capitalize on it what it would be and so when i had seen a presentation from taylor it was just sort of like immediate like okay so if we if we've done it this long and we can't we're not as successful as we think we should be well, let's bring someone else that that has done it before and can do it that's so great now what has your experience been like with them so far so far i'd say fun and exciting um i think the fun part comes in because they are a great group of people to work with taylor and his, and his team um and they're very committed to the success of the program so i think that that's fun i think the exciting part is sort of what we just touched on it's low-hanging fruit i think there's a you know there's a, a lot of revenue out there that can be brought into our club um you talked you you nailed it sarah you know it's like sitting here and just trying to get more memberships when there's other means out there i think is very smart especially now 100 <laughs> percent. especially when you said six thousand members you're down to four thousand let's capitalize on those four thousand yeah. right yeah that's awesome now I'm curious, Matt, if you have an internal marketing team at Fit Factory, and if you do, how has digital revenue systems worked hand in hand with that existing team? Got it. Yeah, we do. We do. We have a team of three, um, a director of marketing, marketing manager, and a communication specialist. They've worked extremely closely together. Um, I'd say there's probably somewhat of a friendship now uh, between the whole group. Actually, if I think about it, Mark, you were there too. We had a dinner at Ursa and the DRS team was there. And I was told by uh, two of the ladies that if uh, Lauren, our director of marketing, ever left Fit Factory, that they would fire me from working with DRS. So I, I think there's something special there. But, but overall, but overall um, at this point, I would consider DRS sort of an extension of our, of our business and family. That is so refreshing to hear. And Taylor and Mark, what a kudos to your team, right? Because, you know, I don't, I'm just, spitballing here, but you have an existing marketing team. You're bringing someone in that doesn't work with Fit Factory to work hand in hand. Like I'm assuming there could have been some like, who are these people? You know, so the fact that you just have won them over and just work so well together, that is just so great to hear. I love to hear that. That's awesome. Now, Matt, ultimately has partnering with digital revenue systems. We, we've touched on the revenue piece. Have they saved you time? I think, uh, well, two, I guess there's, there's two answers to this. I can absolutely and I'm confident to see the time that it's going to save us once we're fully set up. There is time that needs to be spent on the front end because it needs to be our, it, it is our business. This is not white labeled, right? So, you know, integrating the, the current content, which is, again, not profit center marketing per se, but, you know, whatever we're promoting in the club, like class schedules and just that coordination. Um, between in club advertising and our and just our our brand, right? Like our brand standards. So I think the upfront is very important, but I think later down the road, the time savings is, will be significant. That's such a great point. It's like anything. It's like any investment you're making in your club, whether it be software, equipment, you have to spend that upfront time so that it works well and reflects your business and what you want out of it. So great point. Thank you for bringing that in. Um, Matt, what did you have to do to prepare your locations and your teams for the launch of digital revenue systems? So what I mean by that is screen purchases. Did you, you know, look around and say, we need X amount of TVs and signs here? Like, what did that startup process look like for you? It's a good question. Um, I think it, it probably highlights another sort of value add outside of the revenue of Taylor and his team, DRS, you know, because I think it's easy to come in and say, well, you need eight screens, right? And you have to buy them, hang them, run the wire, get them data driven. Or there's also like, I'll call it a value engineering approach, which we've done of, well, why don't we repurpose some of the things you have, right? And instead of, instead of buying additional equipment, why don't we, um, uh, you know, sort of link them or split them using the same, same box, just HDMI. So I think there's a lot of value engineering that can be done. And there's a lot, you can get the same result uh, of eight screens or six or 12 or whatever, with probably what you have right now, to be honest. And if there may be some additional purchases, uh, but I think being very sensitive to each club's financial situation, I think that's where I circle back to the highlighting the value add of that and say, okay, well, let's just figure something else out because everyone's going to be a little different right now. That is awesome. And can you speak to, you know, if a 
going to say it, not every single health club owner is incredibly tech savvy, right? So when we're buying new screen setups, anything like that, hanging, wiring, Matt was there or Taylor, if you want to jump in, is there a process where if an owner is like, can you just tell me what to buy or can, like, how do you, how can you help someone with the setup if they are just really wanting to be hands off with the technology purchase piece? I'll tell you. Uh, well, actually, that's why we're partnered with Reflect. They're the best in the business. They're they are hardware agnostic, like Mark says, yep. and they do the same thing. They they find out what's going to be the best value for the 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 club. What's yep. going to make the most sense and and you know we work hand in hand to, to do you know everything from hardware procurement to you know they help with finding the right people to do the installs and things like that so. Perfect. yeah i can give i can give an example of that probably highlights uh, the previous answer also we had existing uh, bright sign units or boxes in our clubs from doing some in club signage etc and a lot of them were sort of outdated so at that point um taylor gathered them all sent them out somewhere to be fixed maybe mark took them out, i don't even know and change the uh, the SD cards and send them back to work, right? So we didn't have to buy we didn't have to buy new ones, and also I wouldn't have known how to fix them. So they were just kind of handled, sent out, delivered back, and we're, we're repurposing them again. I love that. That's a great example. Thank you so much, Matt. Now, what has working with digital revenue systems opened your eyes to so far, Matt? Uh, that that there is a lot of low hanging fruit. Uh, when it comes to additional revenue, same thing we spoke about before, um, that's out there when it comes to in-club advertising. I think there's a lot you can do with in-club signage as far as a, um, a functionality standpoint, which Reflex comes in. Like we've never had uh, like videos on our signage. They're always static. It, it makes a world of a difference, I'll tell you that. So having the live videos with the advertising, and it, it was, it helped us, real, helped me realize really that in order to be good at in-club advertising and generate the revenue that you can you can generate doing trying to do it yourself it's, it's going to be difficult bringing someone that's done it knows how to do it and really just handles the whole process i think that puts us in the best position to succeed and truly capitalize on, on what's out there love to hear it love to hear it what would you say to a health club owner that is considering working with digital revenue systems I would say that again. I would say, you know, I think we're all at this point in the industry have probably been banging our heads on the table saying we need more members. Where did our members go? Um, you know, the profile of the member has changed and, you know, it's the definition of insanity, right? We know that in this industry, it's doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. So it's just break out. And I think try, you've got to bring in additional revenue streams and, and find partners like Reflect and like DRS that can, that is a hands-off approach, can do it for you and probably do it better than you, to be honest. So good. Matt, thank you so much for your insight. We really appreciate it. All right, Mr. Mark, we are coming to you. Taylor speaks so highly of your partnership and mentioned that when he was needing a software partner to take his business to the next level back in 2018, that you and Reflex Systems were chosen. So what has this partnership and working in the fitness industry been like so far? Um, you know, it, it, it's just, it's been a lot of fun. We, 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 we love our customers and our partners and certainly want to create value in every way that we can. And it, it makes it, it makes it so much easier when you have, um, groups of individuals that are very simpatico and what their, and what their goals and their objectives are and are open to be able to sitting down and, and really kind of strategically coming up with what a solution is going to be. So, you know, um, Taylor, Taylor was a customer prior to being a partner and just we developed a great relationship and really kind of understood the strategy of who we are and what we do, the industries that we're in. And, you know, to this point, we just continue to grow and continue to expand. And, you know, now with the introduction of, you know, top shelf clubs like Fit Factory and the relationship that we now have with Matt and his team, it's just great. It's a great synergy and it's, it's terrific when you can have conversations, you can outline what your objectives are and be able to execute on those strategies. That is awesome. We love good partnerships around here. They make the world a better place. Absolutely. Absolutely. Awesome, Mark. So we are the Fitness Business Podcast, and I heard that you just had your first URSA experience with Taylor in Dallas a few weeks ago. What did you think of our industry Super Bowl? 
Yeah, it was it was pretty incredible and dynamic. I actually live here in Dallas, so typically to go to a conference or an expo, I've got to get on an airplane and go somewhere. And you know, it's it's literally in my own backyard. But I, I got to tell you, I, I needed to recoup from just all, all the energy and the excitement and just the walking around and the meeting the people and the networking. Probably more so, you know, having a twenty mile drive home than I have to do having to get on an airplane. But it was great. From what I understand, the event itself was probably more than half the size of what it typically is. But I will have to tell you, of years of going to different conferences and expos for different industries and verticals. It truly probably had to be one of the most engaging and energetic conferences and expos that I've been to. It was fantastic. And we, as a reflect, we walked away with a lot more information on the, on the health club industry. And it truly has helped us to be even, uh, even a better partner for DRS and as a result, also a fitness factory moving forward. I can attest to that. While the attendance numbers may have been less, the energy was double. <laughs> It was pretty incredible. I was very impressed walking in. It was, it was amazing. That's so cool. Mark, give us a quick little look into what Reflect is and what specifically you do with digital revenue systems to deliver a final product to a customer. Yeah, and, and I appreciate the ability to do that. So Reflect, we've been around for 20 years and we're really kind of a lot of things to a lot of our partners and customers. We can be a complete turnkey solution where digital signage is concerned. Um, our customers include, you know, some of the most recognizable brands globally within the retail, healthcare, entertainment, retail banking, corporate communications, the list goes on and on. At the end of the day, we're really staying within our swim lane. We're a uh, we're a software provider. We provide the software that powers the engagement that takes digital signage networks to the level that they really need to be. To where it's not just you know here's a screen hanging on a wall or here's this great installation. It's really all about what's behind the screen. What's the engagement strategy? What are the objectives? You know, we will always sit down with with a customer, with a partner, and that's really the two things that we're asking for. What are the objectives? What does success look like? And then we're going to build on it from that because then we know, are they looking for return on investment? Do they want to monetize a network? Are they looking to engage? Do they want it to be an interactive type of experience? You know, are they looking to take somebody throughout their store? Are they looking to, you know, whatever those objectives are, help them get there? So with digital revenue, um, it's been great because they've been such a great partner because we really understand that their core value add is to really be able to monetize a network, to be able to come in and take a network, you know, the Matt and Fit Factory already had to where they were engaging their members and, you know, they had curated content and, you know, they knew that they, it wasn't just a screen on a wall, but they were, they were really in it to be able to, to increase their engagement level through Taylor and his team at DRS, they now have the ability to go in and monetize that network and be able to offset, you know, capital expense within bringing in um, new signage into new clubs and then uh, their operating expenses on a monthly basis as well. Very neat. Now, Mark, you mentioned that Reflect works in many different industries. So are there any lessons or just I don't know, you know, fun projects that you've worked on previously that you are taking that experience into how you approach working in the fitness industry? Yeah, I mean, I think we really take into account all of the successes that we've had and quite frankly, some of the failures in the past as well. You know, what what really works and then we certainly want to expand upon that. Um, what has not been as effective because, you know, within any type of technology sector and that definitely includes digital signage, there are some things that maybe aren't quite as effective, whether it's a partnership, whether it's hardware. So, you know, we take that into consideration. But I think especially with the, you know, these two relationships are concerned, it's been great for us because we've been able to have conversations about things that are, that are industry leading, that we know that are working well, that are going to give the ability to monetize the network, but also engage uh, in the customers. And there's a lot of things that you can do around being able to now take that data and utilize that data for the benefit of your club and growing your business. And Matt and I have had conversations about that as well. This is something that, you know, as a digital signage industry and as a leader within that industry um, that, that we offer for our customers as well. So, you know, it's great when you can have this open dialogue about things that are going well that we can then have conversations about how's that going to fit in with, with current objectives. 
So speaking of things going well, what content strategies have you seen be most successful in a health club setting? You know, we're relatively new to the health club setting, but again, you know, being in retail, being in healthcare, being in entertainment, a lot of it is really the same. It's all about that engagement factor. It's all about being able to have custom curated content and have that for the members that are in your club, as Taylor said, for, you know, between an hour and two hours. Um, you know, you have them there, you have this audience. So, you know, you can, you can have a return on investment by the fact that you've invested in your, in your club and, and, and be able to recoup those investments. You can get a return on engagement. You know, they're there. How engaged do you want them to be? We see a lot of, not just within the, I've had conversations within health club, but even within large brands within retail that they think a digital signage network includes just TVs on the wall and USB that goes inside with some content. And, you know, there's so much more to that. It's, it's really a strategy of what does that success look like? So, you know, I think the things that we've seen here um, and that will continue to grow is, you know, as Matt was saying, he's able to have dynamic video content on his network that he wasn't able to have before. So that's something new and changing and, and, and gives him more of a leg up for, um, you know, for his success than he had previously. So it's little things like that, that, that really collectively make a huge difference because at the end of the day, we just want to be able to meet and, and exceed goals and expectations for our partners and, uh, and our customers. Not just about signage, it's about strategy. I want to see Absolutely. that on the website, Taylor. <laughs> That's awesome. Very, very cool. Now, Mark, do you have any numbers and or figures on the success that a business can experience from digital signage? And this does not have to be fitness specific. Do you have any just like canned percentages, success stories, things that you can clue us in on? Yeah, you know, and, and to Taylor threw some of those out earlier today, and there's so much information that's in the marketplace. There's so many numbers and figures and where it comes from and everything. So I, I typically try to not throw out anything that I personally can't qualify or quantify. What we do know is digital versus static is there's just quantum leaps ahead. You know, static, you're going to have to continue to update it. It gets outdated very quickly. You know, there's a, there's a pretty substantial cost in constantly having to reprint what's going to go and there's the human resources of you know replacing signs digital is engaging you know our software provides the opportunity you can change content on one screen multiple screens in however many locations you want you know in real time whatever the type of engagement if you, you've got somebody coming in you need to put some you know some information on uh, especially you know, that's going to be directed towards them. Um, you can digital, just the, that's just the direction everybody's going. The digital, digital signage industry has grown. I think it's supposed to be right at about $34 billion industry within 2023, especially coming out of COVID. We've seen literally every, every brand that we deal with, not only from a consumer engaging standpoint, front of the house, but also back of the house from a human resources standpoint, being able to you know, track metrics and, and effectively communicate with employees as well. So a lot more corporate communication. So there's a lot of things that, that can be done there as well. So you know, digital signage is really what is driving businesses now. And there's just, there's a ton of information out there. I'm happy to supply whatever I could after the fact. There's, there's really no comparison between, you know, what somebody's current engagement level is and how digital signage can amplify that uh, exponentially. I love the mention of communicating with employees. I think that's so interesting. Internal communication as well. That's Absolutely. Awesome. Yes. That's really cool. Mark, is there one mistake that you've seen companies just make time and time again when trying to really win at digital signage? Yeah, I mean, there's probably a relatively long list, but, uh, you know, I think probably the, probably the base one, and, and I think this is really what truly sets reflect apart from a lot of the other companies that are out there is it's really all about the digital engagement. So, you know, our customers, not only our partners, we deal with some of the top AV integrators around the globe is you know typically when a when a company will look and go you know what we we want digital signage we want to have that in here it kind of starts off with they look around at a screen and go who made that screen well let's contact that company whoever it is 
then it's, you know, these are the screens we want. This is where we think it needs to go on a wall. Now we got to find somebody who's going to install it. And it's really all about the hardware. And it's really not about behind the screen because really once you plug that in and that content that is there, that's really what's going to resonate to success. So this is where, you know, we really start as a, as a solution centric organization is talking about that engagement strategy. What are the objectives? What does success look like? What do you really want to do? Um, you know, what's the resource allocation that you want to put towards this? Because in a lot of cases, you can come up with a strategy that's the most amazing thing in the world, but there's the economic portion of it as well. So um, we work very diligently and it's our goal as a company to, you know, just have those initial conversations, come up with a strategy and then put together how we're going to collectively get there, set benchmarks for what that success looks like, and then start to deploy that, which in a lot of cases, it's really kind of more of a, a crawl, walk, run type of approach because we want to be very successful. So we do maybe a proof of concept in a few locations. So I guess the short answer would be really having an engaging conversations around what that strategy looks like, knowing how the success is going to be able to happen, and then being able to, to deploy on that, but also having the ability to, to be able to make the tweaks as you move forward. Because when you have, you know, when you have a club operator, you know, like Matt at Fit Factory, where they're continuing to grow, we want to get it right, right out of the gate as they continue to grow in their locations. Or if we have a club, you know, if we have a customer, a retail customer with a huge enterprise net size network, we want to make sure that we're going to be able to fit into what their, you know, what their overall strategy is. So good. Content over everything. I love it. Love to see it. That's great, Mark. Last but not least, what would you say to a health club owner that has yet to try digital signage in their facility? Uh, what are you waiting for? <laughs> you know, I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's really very simply put, you know, if you're not going to have a conversation with Taylor or myself, or if you don't have the luxury of knowing Matt, where you can bend his ear and, and find out you know, what this is all about, I at least let me know. I can connect you with somebody because you you need to have a good digital engagement strategy. You need to have digital signage in your club. It's, it's the best way to be able to engage with your members. It gives you also the ability to, you know, to have another revenue stream. So if, if you're not, you should. Why wouldn't you want to work with this group? You're going to have a lot of fun. You're going to get a great workout. You're going to have great seafood. I mean. <laughs> um, um, absolutely. For all those reasons and many more. <laughs> That's so good. Awesome. Well, thank you all so, so much for walking us through some tips, tricks, and background on how to revolutionize digital signage with digital revenue system. Taylor, if someone is listening in today and they're wanting to work with you and your team, what is the first step that they should take? Actually, we are looking to onboard people. We're doing the onboarding starting February of 2022. Uh, you can still give us a call or email. We'll get your info and we would love to do a quick quote to get an idea of your club, you, your staff, and learn more about all that. And then we are willing to work outside the U.S. and Canada, but we'll do it on a consulting basis due to all the COVID restrictions and things like that. Awesome. Can you explain how the pricing model works currently? Well, the pricing model for, well, I guess this is twofold as well. One, if we're building the network, of course, anything coming in, you know, you're going to buy equipment, you're buying, you know, our time, our expertise and things like that. So there is an upfront cost with that. As far as the pricing on the ads and all, it, again, it depends on the club. You know, we look at the full demographic analysis. We look at their traffic. What's the length of ad that we actually want to show? Do we want to do 10, 15, 30 second ads? Do we want to do all three? That should give us an inventory that we're looking to, to fulfill. And then we start looking at, you know, what's the number of impressions? What's a good cost per thousand a CPM for those ads that we run and then you know we kind of go from there and work directly with the club to figure that out that's awesome now i understand there to be a revenue share model as well so what does that look like for health club owners again it depends on what the club wants to do because we can do a couple of things um if we do all the selling for you we do a 60 40 split where we take 60 percent of the net revenue 40 percent goes to the club they don't have to do anything except get a check. If the club wants to use 
us as a way for their membership team, personal training, whatever, to have a another income source, we flip it. We'll give 60% to the club, 40% will go to us to do all the management. Uh, we take care of all the compliance, all the billing. We take care of, you know, coordinating with the business to get their ads to, and things like that. We take the worry about the business advertiser away from the club. They just need to worry if, hey, can I sell more spots? We'll take care of the rest. I can only imagine that that's very timely. Yes. That's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, which is an, another reason we're with Reflect because they're the best in the business. That's fantastic. Is there a website, email address that we can direct people to? Yep, uh, digital rev, R-E-V systems with an S, dot com. And you can get to me directly at taylor at digitalrevsystems.com, T-A-Y-L-O-R. Perfect, perfect, perfect. All right. Thank you all so much for tuning in to the value proposition for revolutionizing digital signage with digital revenue systems. Tune in Friday, December 17th for our next episode with Therabody. And to show we walk the talk at the Fitness Business Podcast, all the resources and links for today's show can be found at fitnessbusinesspodcast.com, adding value to our FBP family. Until next month, what you leave behind is not what is engraved in stone monuments, but what is woven into the lives of others. See you next month, FBP family. 